Hey, welcome to Draw It Tuesday. Last week we have been playing with our crayons and we drew a still life. And I do realize that even when you are playing and experimenting with color, capturing perspective can be kind of tricky. So today I want to go back to that same still life and um, take a look at how you can actually ignore perspective for your drawing still to make a lot of sense, even when the perspective is off. So let's intentionally not worry about perspective at all. Today I am not using crayons, but I want to start with watercolor and then I will go back in and add a line. So let's start with slapping down those main shapes onto the page again. I'm just picking up some colors from my palette and place the shapes on the page. If you don't want the colors to bleed into each other, make sure you keep some space between the shapes you're painting. The great thing is, when you're painting first, this way you are defining the placement of the subjects. But you don't need to be thinking about any details and also about perspective. Just have a close look what goes where. It helps to squint your eyes to filter out any details or distractions. I mix my color for the tea mug, which is actually a white mug, but I am mixing a warm gray using brown and blue. I know this all looks like indistinctive blobs, but wait until it's dried and we are adding line. I am super impatient, so I am ignoring the fact that the green stem of the pepper hasn't dried just yet. I'll just work around it. Let's make these blobs into a drawing that actually makes sense. I like using a fat black line. This sailor fountain pen with calligraphy nib is one of my favorite pens for line. I'll start with the coffee cup, just because that feels like the right starting point. I'm drawing an oval for the rim of the cup. And then I draw another line around it at the top, which I draw down to the bottom of the cup. If I would be thinking about perspective, the bottom of the cup would be a curved line parallel to the oval. However, I am going to make this a straight line on purpose. See what a playful effect that has immediately? It is kind of freeing to draw inaccurately this way. Let's do the same thing for the tea mug. I am adding the little dish to, and again, the perspective is totally off. The only thing I am making sure of is that the edge of the front is overlapping the orange and the avocado. But even that, you can let go if you want to. Now for the pepper and the other things in the dish, I'm not tracing the shapes that I painted, but I am using it to guide me just a little bit. For the avocado, I'm using marks to create that rough texture. I kind of made it look hairy, but you know what? I don't mind. Let's try to add a bit of the orange skin texture, maybe simply with some dots. I'll keep it light and I won't use as many dots in the lighter area of the orange as in the darker area. We need just a little bit of shading inside of the dish. So I'm adding very straight lines, vertical for the sides and diagonal lines at the bottom inside. These are parallel to the straight line I used for the outside bottom of the dish. Repetition works really well in drawings. Remember last week I repeated a color somewhere else in the drawing. That is also for balance. And if you repeat a direction of lines, that will really bring in some kind of balance, repetition, a good vibe basically to your drawing. Now, just a little bit of drop shadow. Bold lines will do the trick. And let's add the edge of the table. Again, I'm not looking at how it should look in perspective. I'm just describing the rounded shape of the table. Looking at what I drew, I think I actually could have done this more extreme inaccurately, but I guess I can't help myself. 
But anyway, even if it's not accurate in perspective, the drawing makes total sense. It has a lot more personality to it as well, which I love. So hopefully this helps you to let go of the idea that you should be really great at perspective. You should understand perspective completely to make a nice drawing. Just let go, loosen up, make mistakes, make them purposefully and um, see how it works out. Because I think you can actually make really great drawings and be really happy about them too. If you let go of that constant perfectionist inside of your head. Okay, so try this out. I would love to see what you make. I would love to hear how you experience this. So if you want to share, do that on social media using the hashtag DTT in action so I can see what you make. I'll see you next week. Bye.